attention. Thank you. And the House will now move on to private members' business, as indicated um, in, on the order paper today. Second reading of Bill C-308, Newfoundland and Labrador Fishery Rebuilding Act, standing in the name of Mr. Cleary. Mr. Cleary, seconded by Mr. Stalker, moves that Bill C-308, an act respecting a commission of inquiry into the development and implementation of a national fishery rebuilding strategy for fish stocks off the coast of Newfoundland and Labrador, be now read a second time and referred to the Standing Committee on Fisheries and Oceans. Debate the Honourable Member for St. John's South Mount Curl. Thank you, Madam Speaker. My private member's bill, Bill C-308, is an act respecting a commission of inquiry into the development and implementation of a national fishery rebuilding strategy for fish stocks off the coast of Newfoundland and Labrador. The short title of my bill, the title that cuts to the chase, is the Newfoundland and Labrador Fishery Rebuilding Act. The key word, Madam Speaker, is rebuilding. We must rebuild. We must rebuild what was once one of the world's greatest protein resources, the Grand Banks of Newfoundland. We must rebuild what's been lost to us. We must rebuild the fish stocks and use them as a foundation for life after oil, as a foundation for the future of Newfoundland and Labrador. Rebuild. Let that be the one word that resonates with every member of this House. Rebuild. Almost 20 years after the fall of the Newfoundland and Labrador cod fisheries, and there's been practically no rebuilding. None. Why, Madam Speaker? That's the key question that an inquiry would answer. Why? Why haven't stocks rejuvenated? Why haven't stocks been rebuilt? Why, Madam Speaker? Why has the moratorium stretched almost 20 years when John Crosby said in 1992 that it would last only two years? Commercial fish stocks are in desperate shape, about as desperate as they were when the fisheries were first closed. Why, Madam Speaker? Soon after Newfoundland joined Confederation in 1949, she handed over responsibilities, responsibility of her fisheries to the Government of Canada to manage. The fisheries were our offshore oil of today, an incredible resource, an incredible wealth. Only unlike oil, the fisheries were an incredible renewable resource, a renewable wealth. Sixty-two years after Confederation and our commercial fisheries for species such as cod, what was once known as Newfoundland currency, are on their knees. How far have we fallen? For most of the year, it's illegal to jig a cod, to jig a fish from the vastness of the North Atlantic. What was once seen as a Newfoundland birthright is now a crime. But the real crime, the real crime, is the fact that nothing has been done, is the fact that the fish resource has not been rebuilt, that we haven't acted. The real crime is that a generation later and the stocks are still in the same desperate shape. The Grand Banks of Newfoundland were fished out, plain and simple. In the year 1968, the northern cod catch was officially recorded at 810,000 tons, three times the, estima the estimated maximal, maximum sustainable catch. Unofficially, more than one million tons of northern cod were taken from the sea that year. It's been downhill ever since. To be clear, this is not about blame. There's blame to be shared by everyone, by the Government of Canada, 
by the government of Newfoundland and Labrador, by foreign trawlers, by our own domestic fleet, by viewing the fishery as an occupation of last resort, by international organizations that are powerless, that are toothless to manage migratory stocks, by the use of fish stocks as international bargaining chips, by greed, by apathy everywhere. The apathy must end. To quote Rex Murphy, Newfoundlander Rex Murphy, from a National Post column earlier this month, Newfoundland is in silent crisis. Increasingly, St. John's highly concentrated economy resembles a sort of miniature Hong Kong amidst an, in, an increasingly deserted province. Outmigration is stealing a whole generation of Newfoundlanders. The outports are becoming just places where the parents live. And the larger centers outside St. John's have become dominated by old age homes. To quote another Newfoundlander, Zita Cobb of Fogo Island, who's renowned as an entrepreneur and a visionary, who's behind one of the largest projects ever attempted to preserve even a small portion of rural Newfoundland. She says, if something isn't done now, we're going to be disconnected from our sense of community and our sense of past. The most tragic thing that could happen, Cobb says, and it's happening now, is for a son not to understand his father's life. Our Newfoundland and Labrador culture, a culture steeped in the fishery, is slowly dying. Let me fish off Cape St. Mary's is one of, the most, one of the most powerful Newfoundland and Labrador songs ever written. Will there, will there come a day when we won't relate to that song? Or a day when we're forced to change the words? Let me drill off Fort McMurray. We must rebuild or that will happen. The ultimate tragedy is not so much that the stocks collapsed, but that there's no plan to rebuild them. That's Confederation's greatest failure. That's our national embarrassment. That's our national shame. That's Newfoundland and Labrador's silent crisis. Canada once bore the reputation as a great steward of the sea. Our reputation is worth our reputation today is worth as much as an empty net. An inquiry would investigate federal and provincial fisheries management. Is the management working? The ultimate measure of that management is the state of the stocks, the state of the industry. The management, obviously, isn't working. Stock after stock after stock has failed. One of the last reports on Northern Cod was carried out in 2005 by the House of Commons Standing Committee on Fisheries and Oceans. The report was entitled Northern Cod, a failure of Canadian fisheries management. The title says it all. What was done with that report? Ask me, what was done with that report? Nothing. <laughs> 